There's only one mandolin picker that ever sounded like that. We're going to talk about it today on Wayne's World of Mandolin. YouTube. Today we're going to celebrate the life of a great man and a great bluegrass mandolin player. Mr. Herschel Sizemore has passed over, as they say. He was a just super gentle soul. If you never did meet him, he it seemed like he never did meet a stranger. He had all these amazing stories from his years of being part of the bluegrass industry and loved to share that kind of thing, I think especially with younger people. I first met him when I was maybe 15 or 16 years old in Statesville, North Carolina. I'm sure he wouldn't remember that, but then um, later on, when Greg Luck and myself were roommates during the time that Greg was playing with the Bluegrass Cardinals, and Herschel was in the band at that time on mandolin. So that was my opportunity to really get to know him and play his mandolins. If anybody ever loved vintage Gibson mandolins and knew those, the history of them and the different tonal characteristics, I learned a lot in conversation with Herschel about those instruments. And he was so sharing in that way also. But his touch on mandolin his um, catalog of, of stuff that he did is what runs really deep. I mean, we tend to think of that tune, Rebecca, that is a big deal. Um, that particular song was probably, in my opinion, the biggest bluegrass jam session instrumental of the entire decade of the 1990s. In the 80s, in the mandolin world, we kind of had New Camp Town Races, the Frank Wakefield song, and then that one kind of got knocked out of that number one slot by Rebecca in the 90s. So Herschel really did, I think, make a name for himself, and his bouncy style of playing is kind of built into the way that melody is, is actually supposed to be executed. His playing, and in that one tune especially, you can kind of hear his the importance of, that Herschel carries in the evolution of bluegrass mandolin from the Bill Monroe or what we think of as more traditional sounds and then moving into, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say more of the guys my generation that are the same age as me. If you think about Alan Bobby and Adam Steffi and Ronnie McCurry, we all were influenced by Herschel. One of the First players I ever heard doing Rebecca, other than Herschel, was Adam Steffi, early on with Allison Krauss and Union Station. I've heard Ronnie McCurry um, play that instrumental. Just recently, they did it as a tribute after Herschel passed away, and I know I've heard Alan Bobby play that tune as well. So we, we all had enough of that in us that I think it became part of our mandolin DNA. But the records that you would want to keep an eye out for and this is for the younger people because I want this video to to provide an opportunity for some of the younger people that might not have been familiar with Herschel maybe to go back and study it and listen to his body of material so that you kind of see the evolution that he you know had such a big part of with bluegrass early on bounce away this recording would have been made I'm pretty sure during the the time that he spent playing with Dale McCurry, and we'll talk about the different bands that he was in here in a, in a minute too, but Bounce Away, this recording really did put him on the map, and it was a big deal in, in these days when this record would have been released. It wasn't as common for a sideman in a group to even have a solo project, so it was something unique in its own way 
from the beginning, not to mention his amazing playing and how far ahead of its time he really sounds on this record. This is actually has just been made available on Spotify a few weeks ago. You got to go check it out if you haven't heard it. And then this next recording, Back in Business, um, another amazing collection of instrumentals that he wrote, tunes that he decided to record. This would have been along the time when he came back in business and started playing with the Bluegrass Cardinals and released this project. I can't, I'm going to, I'm going to guess and say like maybe 93 or 94 that I may be wrong on that. And then this last one, my style, as he calls it, another great Herschel project. These are his solo projects that you'd want to be familiar with. You're going to hear some really great waltzes, some great tremolo, great tone and great writing in all of these recordings. But as far as his History, it runs a lot deeper than this, and you could check out the Wikipedia page on him or the Bluegrass Today article after he passed, but he worked with Jimmy Martin from 67 until 69, a part of his career that I wasn't familiar with until reading about this. Then with the Shenandoah Cut-Ups, who I was familiar with, I'm, I think that Wes Golden was even a part of that band at one point, and then, of course, with Dale McCurry, and then finally with the Bluegrass Cardinals. So a, a really cool career that we have in Herschel Sizemore. We're going to miss him, pal. We're going to see you on the other side. And um, thank you for everything that you brought to our mandolin community. <laughs> 